angels. I said, you know, I want you to come and bring a few of your friends along. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So I just believe, praise God, that there are angels all in this place. Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. Amen. You know why I do that? Because I get tired of people talking about demons all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I know the devil shows up all the time, but I ain't got demons hanging around me. I got angels. Angels. You know what I'm saying? You know, we got to get back to those old songs, like all night, all day, angels watching over me. Come on, if you got angels watching over you, can you give God some praise?
spirit, that we will preach in the spirit, God. And Father God, that deliverance may be wrought in the spirit. May the Lord Jesus Christ be lifted up in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Our theme is, praise God, stay connected. Coming out of John chapter 15 and in verse 5, where I believe Jesus Christ, amen, speaks concerning that it is the Father's will, amen, that we bear much fruit. And of course, we understand in order to bear fruit, we have to stay connected, amen. Praise God. And so in keeping with this New Testament scripture, which I'm sure will be ministered on later in the week, I thought I would just go with an Old Testament Amen. Story of the importance of staying connected. Amen. Amen. So since it's just us here, and as I look out in this audience and we're all Bible scholars here and we understand the story, amen, I'm pretty sure that all of us understand the story of Samson. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. We understand that Samson was God's superman. Amen. We understand that Samson has this unique anointing that was greater probably than all the, all the other judges that were put together. In fact, you know, the, the story of Samson, uh, even though it's in the book of Judges, it probably could have been a book in and of itself, amen? Because when the Bible speaking of all the various judges, uh, they all kind of blended together. But when you come into the story of Samson, you understand that Samson is special in the fact that Amen. He was an anointed one. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible lets us know that the children of Israel had gotten into sin and had gotten into trouble. Okay? And because they got into sin and trouble, they ended up in bondage. Amen. Amen. And it's important that we recognize, particularly in these days and times, when we don't hear it, that any time you get caught up in sin, particularly a lifestyle of sin, that guess what? It will end up in bondage. Yeah. Amen. Can we sit with the scriptures? Because this was the reason why God sent Samson. Amen. Because the nation of Israel, the Bible says, got in the sin. And here's the thing that is important for us to understand because, you know, if, you know, I don't get it when it comes to uh, 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 many times the modern day church. Because it's almost as if, like, the church reads this and doesn't think it applies to us. Right. But the fact is, is that God is no respecter of person. That's right. And Israel was the most favorite nation. If ever there was a nation that was ever, that, that was ever prayed on this planet, Israel was God's favorite nation. And if Israel got into sin and God judged them and allowed them to go into bondage, how many of you know that there's no exceptions with the United States of America? That's exactly right. Can we just deal with it, amen? Praise God. Now, I know some people are saying, well, the children of Israel are, you know, uh, are dealing with, with bondage with the Philistines, and America's a great nation, and America's not in bondage with any other nation. But the fact is, is this, okay? You don't have to be in bondage with a nation, uh, and then it's still being bondage. Why is it? Because guess what? You can be in bondage to drugs. Yes. Are you hear what I'm saying? And guess what? America is in bondage. Yeah. You can be in bondage to violence and perversion. And as we see, America is in bondage. Yeah. Yeah. Is in bondage. You can be in bondage with runaway storms. There's a scripture in Jeremiah that says one of the last day judgments will be that the whirlwind, the tornado of the Lord will be yeah. released. The United States has more tornadoes yeah. in this country yeah. than all other countries put together. You can be in bondage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. And you need to understand. Guess what? It's not because of climate change. It's not because of all this. And, and the next one thing you know is simply because of sin. sin. Come on, can somebody say amen? Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And the fact is, 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 I don't care who gets elected to office. I don't care what, you know, what party they come from. Until you deal with the sin issue, there is not going to be any deliverance. I wish I had some help in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the reason why I'm dealing with this is because we have to understand that this is the reason why God allowed Saul, uh, or excuse me, Samson to be born. Because he was born to help bring them out to begin to deliver them from bondage. 
He was anointed for that. Amen? Yeah. So if bondage for a nation is no respecter of person, then the anointing is no respecter of person. Because it lets us know that if God anointed Samson to help bring his people out of bondage, then guess what? Yeah. God anointed you to do more than just shout. God anointed you to do more than just dance. God anointed you to do more than just wear a nice suit. We understand, amen. If God anointed Samson to bring other people out of bondage, then he anointed you to bring other people out of bondage too. Amen. Somebody may say, where is your scripture? Hey, I got my scripture. The anointing destroys the yoke of bondage. Yeah. I wish somebody would give God some praise. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. And so you need to understand everybody in this room, amen, has a superpower just like Samson. Amen. But it doesn't get activated until you make up in your mind. Amen. Praise God for God to use you to help bring somebody out. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me preach. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you are called to bring somebody out. Amen. Praise God. God forbid that you should go to heaven. And when you get there, you're the only one there. Amen. Yeah. I've said this before. There should be scores of people. Amen. That when they give their testimony on high, they should be saying, you know what? I thank God for giving me. Because one for him. Amen. I wouldn't have come out. Amen. Praise God. That somebody should be saying, I thank God. Amen. For Pastor Holland. Because she preached me out. Can somebody here, amen. Praise God. Thank you. And praise God. Amen. For Brother Scale, for Sister Elliot, amen. For the Grouches, amen. For Sister Jane, amen. Thank you, Jesus. For Bishop Murray, praise God. And if I haven't mentioned your name, you, you tell you, praise God, shout your name. Somebody should be saying, everybody should be saying, thank God for you because you love your reality, amen. Praise God. Because guess what? All of us are here today because somebody else does do that. Praise God. Praise God. When I heard that you started ministry in 1979, it touched me because I got saved in 1979. Amen. Praise God. It was a neighbor. We, we were a bunch of hard-headed teenage boys who was carrying on and all this. And it was the 70s, you know what I'm saying? Black power, you know what I mean? Okay, this is white dude next to us. Okay, please give him a hard time because he had this dog and he named the dog Blackie. <laughs> you know, one dog was black, okay? You know what I'm saying? But we was like, what's up, man? You know what I mean? But, but you know, he didn't get scared. He didn't get intimidated. He kept on telling us about Jesus and inviting us to church, amen? And initially, we laughed at it. But there's something when somebody that's anointed, amen, starts inviting you to church. There's an anointing in your invitation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And all of a sudden, amen, it, it, it wasn't the first time, wasn't the second time, wasn't the third time. I don't remember when, but eventually we started going to church with him, and I got born again, and, and praise God, I would not be standing up here. Oh, somebody help to bring Somebody me help. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody praise help. God. And so, this is the life of Samson, amen? Now, the thing that is important concerning Samson is, is that he, he's a miracle child. We understand this. The angel comes and shows up to his mother because she's barren. And the angel says, okay, you're going to have this miracle child. He's going to begin to deliver Israel. I like that. You know, there's certain. It didn't say he would do it all himself. Because look, somebody said you can't do it all can't himself. Can't do it by yourself. Amen. But you can play your part. Yes, sir. Amen. So, so he says he's going to begin to deliver him. But it's very important to understand, amen, that, that there's no way he's going to bring other people out and to pull them out un unless he stays connected to his yes. source. Yes, amen? And so, and so the angel says, so the first thing you've got to understand is, is that in order, for him, in order for him to stay connected, because if he's going to have the power to bring other people out, you've got to be connected to the source of power. Yes. Now look, somebody say, you've got to stay connected. Stay connected. Amen. Amen. So the first thing the angel says is this, okay, is that he is not to touch the fruit of the vine. Okay? That's right. Not to touch the fruit of the Why is this? Because, first of all, wine and alcohol comes from the fruit, fruit of, of the, the vine. vine okay? yeah. and, and, and the thing is, is, if you look at the life of Israel, Israel was in idolatry. If you study anything about idolatry, it was always connected to alcohol. Yeah. It was always yeah. connected to drugs of some kind. And guess what? Don't be 
uh, deceived, okay? You need to understand God is not bought. Whatever a man sows, amen, he will also reap. And guess what? Alcohol has been used to get people of bondage and yeah. for thousands of years yeah. and is still being used yeah. to this day. And so the first thing the angel said is this, okay? That God does not want you to be connected. If you're going to deliver somebody from bondage, then the last thing you want to do is be connected to bondage. Right. Right? That's right. That's Praise right. God. That's right. Jesus. That's right. Now, I know I couldn't preach this in a Baptist church, but I think it's since I'm here. Can I talk about it? Yes, you can. But, but what is even more important is this, okay? That, that, that the angel didn't even mention alcohol. The angel said, don't even touch the fruit of the vine. Don't even touch the grape. Now, why is this, okay? There's nothing sinful about grape. He didn't even want to drink grape juice. But what the angel was saying is, is I don't even want Samson to have a taste of what possibly bondage Woo like. right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't want him to get an appetite of what bondage wow. like. You know, oftentimes we talk about, hey amen, well, you know, I don't do this sin, I don't do that sin, I don't commit adultery, and then that's one thing and another. But what you need to understand is if you watch movies with adultery, come on, come on, are you hearing what I'm saying, amen? Hey Okay, then, then if you're not careful, you, you can end up getting a draw. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you can end up yeah. getting an appetite of it, and the enemy can end up. Let me tell you some people don't just fall into sin. That's you know what I'm trying to say? The devil gets a hook in them, yeah. and, and if he can get a hook in you sooner or later, he can really yeah. in. talk to me, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to understand, praise God. God is saying, don't even be connected to the scent of it. Amen. Oh, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about sanctification. Amen. We are wondering why we don't have power in the church today. It's because the church has forgotten about the subject of sanctification. Yes, amen. yes, yes. But I heard the Bible say, amen, to come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. What fellowship has light with darkness? What concord has Christ with Belial? It is interesting because he said, come out, and then you will be my sons and be my daughters. There is a price, amen, if you want to stay connected, amen. Praise God. Praise God. So guess what? Don't even get the taste of it. And the second thing is this. He said, and don't allow his hair to be cut. Amen? Yeah. His hair. What did the hair suit? What's the bottom of it? And, 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 and I begin to study this. What you need to understand is, is that the hair was symbolic of constant communion. Okay? So the first thing God says is this, okay? Yeah. Don't touch things Amen. That can cause you to be disconnected by uncleanliness, but at the same time, make sure that you have constant communion. Why is this? Because anytime you have constant communion, you will continually grow. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You can always tell when a person is in constant communion because they will grow. Amen. You cannot stay in fellowship with God. You cannot stay in fellowship with the Word and not grow. Amen. You need to understand, praise God, your hair you can't see growing. You know, you, you can't look in the mirror, amen, and, and see it coming. But day after day, amen, week after week, you will look and, and you realize that it is grown. That is the same with your faith. That if you stay in constant union, if you stay in constant fellowship, are you hear what I'm saying, amen? Then slowly but surely, you need to grow. The Bible says that Samson had seven lots of hair. Somebody say seven, seven lots, lots of, hair. of hair. Thank you, Jesus, amen? And, 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 and those lots are symbolic of several things. But the first thing you need to understand is, is that one of the things that the Bible tells you to grow in is that it says that you're to grow in grace. Uh -huh. And so you need to understand, I believe one of those locks meant to grow in grace. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now it's not just grace that God gives you, but it's grace that you give to other people. I am so proud. And how many saints? have been saved for years, and they can't give nobody no slack. They quit to get offended. They come to get out of the church. Amen. I, you know what I'm saying? If the pastor don't speak to them one Sunday, amen, then they get off.
all upset. Well, guess what, amen? Praise God. If you're growing in grace, amen, then, then by God's grace, you should be able to forgive somebody, amen, give them the benefit of the doubt, amen, turn the other cheek, but you need to make up in your mind, if God has given you grace, you need to give grace to other people, amen? That's why I say growing in grace. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. The next one thing is grow in love, amen? Praise God. The love of God. The Bible says, it says that if we had faith in all these things and move mountains, if we have not love, they did it profit us nothing. Amen. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he came his only begotten son. And you need to understand, amen, when we grow in love, it's love for God, but I'm going to say it again, amen, you have to have love for other people. You ain't going to bring nobody out if you don't have love for the lost. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Yeah. You know why I'm preaching this? Because I'm getting tired of preaching the saints. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back in the old days on a Friday, amen, yeah. you had somebody bring in some sinners. You had some people bring some lost folks. And on a Friday, amen, back in the old days, maybe a drunk will come in. You know what I'm saying? And still that. We don't have that no more. Yeah. Because the truth is, a lot of times we ain't even thinking about bringing nobody. Amen. But we got to get back to loving lost people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When's the last time you invited your neighbor to church? When's the last time you asked somebody to come? When's the last time you said, you know what? I'm going to fill up my whole pew. Thank you, Jesus. Look at my say, grow in love. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Then after that, grow in faith. Amen. Because after you have love, faith will move mountains. Amen. One of the reasons that people aren't convinced is because we don't have power. And guess what? It takes faith to have power. You need to understand, amen. Praise God, people will get delivered, amen. Not just not when they come to church and get delivered, but when saints go out there in faith, amen. And you, after you tell somebody about Jesus, you lay hands on them and you cast out the devil, amen. Have faith. Have, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Because that kind of faith takes fasting and it takes prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But look at what I say, grow in faith. Amen. Praise God. But not just that, grow in hope. Amen. Praise God. That Jesse Jackson said a long time, keep hope alive. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You need to understand, faith won't work and love won't work if you don't have no hope. One of the problems that we don't have no hope is that, yes, we understand the problems that are going on, but I'm here to tell you something. Amen. The Bible says, with sin of the bound, grace of much more bound, and God is not finished, amen, with us yet. Look at my say, keep hope alive. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is not finished with your children yet. God is not finished with your family yet. You need to understand Abraham, his faith was activated when he hoped against hope. That means when he looked at the barrenness of his wife and it looked like she was never going to have a child, the Bible says he was dead physically. He said in spite of how bad things look, guess what? God looks better. Amen. And I still believe that God it's going to do something great. Look what I say. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Set the locks. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the next one is this. And praise God. Keep joy alive. Why is it? Because you need to understand. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. Walking around complaining all the time. Now, I know we do good in church. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm talking about when you get home with your husband. Amen. Praise God. When you get home with your wife. Murmuring and complaining and the next one thinking another, okay? I'm here to tell you something. Praise God. You need to rebuke that. That is a spirit. And the spirit's trying to make you mad because the spirit understands if you don't keep your joy, you ain't going to have no strength. But the devil is a liar. Look at what I say. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Not joy. You want to tell we get upset? Because our joy is in people. And guess what? If your joy is in people, you're going to get disappointed. So then, if your joy is in your husband, he's going to disappoint you. If your joy is in your wife, he's going to disappoint you. If your joy is in the government, he's going to disappoint you. Amen. But the Bible says don't have joy in no those things. It says have joy in the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and I don't have time to go into all of these like I want to, amen, because you, you're supposed to grow in all these things, amen. You're supposed to grow in the word, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I talk about it? Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. How many preachers do we have in this room? Yes, amen. You will not grow in the word unless you have the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
I'm not trying to hear this stuff about you being saved and you don't want to come to church because you don't want to hear no preaching. Are you hear what I'm saying? When the preacher's preaching, you not know. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God says, forsake not the sinly of yourselves together and in which is the manner of some. You need to understand the devil who doesn't want you to grow in the word because he knows this, amen, that you can't defeat him if you don't have the word. When Satan came against Jesus, he kind of said Jesus didn't sing a song. He didn't sing a hymn. He didn't sing no maverick city. He used the word. He said it is written in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So look at somebody say, grow in the word. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And last but not least, praise God. Grow in peace. Grow in peace. Grow in peace. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You should be less frustrated next week than this week. Grow in peace. Amen. Grow in peace. Praise God. Now, this is very important because this is the important key. Because the Bible says he will give you perfect peace as your mind is stayed on him. So, so it's very important to understand that his ear is growing, okay? Grace is growing. Uh, 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 love is growing. Faith is growing. Amen? The word is growing. But, but you need to understand that it was all connected to the roots of peace. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And it was growing based on the fact that he kept his mind stayed on the word. Yeah. Amen? You got to keep your mind stayed on the word. Are yeah. right, you hear what I'm saying? Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Are you know what I'm saying? Praise God. You need to make up in your mind, amen, when you turn on the radio, don't be turning away to that 703 point whatever, get on whatever, next one thing and another, okay? No, 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 no. Oh, well, that's black people. Well, guess what? You need to understand black folks are going to hell too. They ain't trying to hear whether they're black folks or not. Is it, it does it keep your mind stayed on Jesus or not? I'm sorry, kid. I get the wrong... No. I want to stay connected. Am I right? Oh, yeah. you, you connected a bunch of stuff. Hello? Thank you, Jesus. You got you had to keep your mind stayed on him. As long as Samson's mind was stayed on the Lord, he was in this. You need to understand, Samson's mind was stayed upon the Lord, and when a roaring lion came against him, I believe the roaring lion was a real lion, was symbolic of Satan, because the Bible says Satan boiled about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he made the power, and then Samson grabbed that lion by the mouth and ripped him in two. I'm here to tell you something, amen. When, when, when you have stayed connected, you keep your yeah. mind staying on him, and you stay growing in the word of God, are you the one I'm saying? Now, I'm a bit old-fashioned, see, I, I can deal with it because, you know what? I remember a time when St. Solomon came to Sunday morning with the Bible study. That's right. Come on now. Come on now. Are you the one I'm saying? That's a bad word. I didn't want eight men on that Bible study. I can hear the crickets out. The crickets didn't even cricket. <laughs> are you the one I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But it's important to grow. Amen. As long as he grew, you need to understand. Amen. Praise God, he was able to destroy the line. I'm here to take something. There's no devil in hell that can stand against you. Amen. If you keep your communion and keep your connection. If you keep your hands off the things of this world, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. When, when war came up against him. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Amen. The Lord is the strength of mine. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came up against me, the war against me, they tumbled, they stumbled and fell. The host of the camp against me, my heart shall, be, shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. And this will I be confident. One thing. One thing. That's a One thing. Amen. Praise God. To dwell in the house of the Lord. All the Yes, sir. Amen. With the jawbone of a donkey. Uh huh. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Slew a thousand. Uh huh. I'm here to tell you something. Amen. You are invincible yeah. if you just stay connected with God. Yes, if you just keep your mind stayed upon Him. Samson was not perfect. Yeah. Samson had difficulties. Amen. But the problem happened was this. Amen. Is that he laid his lap, his head, in the wrong lap. Yeah. Yeah. He laid his head in the wrong lap. Now understand, amen. 
It just didn't start there. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, Lady Big Cat. It, is, it started when he started communing with other things that weren't God. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, instead of coming to Bible study today, I, you know, I guess I'm going to stay home and watch Housewives of the Land. <laughs> Oh yeah, Saints is watching. You know why I know? Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Because you see these Saints going at Hello? You got whiplash. <laughs> Are you doing what I'm saying? So, so, so it was a slow seduction. It was yeah. a slow seduction. Okay? You know, but the thing is, is, what I found out is this. is that even though he was slipping and sliding, God still didn't let him go. And the truth is, if many of us would be truthful, we could, you know, we would have to admit, amen, that we didn't always do everything right. We didn't always keep our hands from, from things. But we're so thankful that in spite of the mistakes and mistakes, and then God didn't leave us. See, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And see, this is where we miss up. Because sometimes you go the wrong direction, but here's the thing. Don't stay in the wrong direction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That's why I push church. Because let me tell you something. Many times when I got saved when I was 15, people were pushing me over here. People were pushing me over there. No, and, and, and I was in college and things like that. And friends were inviting me. The parties on Friday and Saturday because I said I went to church. And I don't know how many times, amen, I was going wrong and the preacher preached me right. Wow. All right. Are you know what I'm saying? Amen. That's right. That's right. If the preach, if everything the preacher preaches, Amen. That if something don't step on your toes, excuse right. me. If something don't make you right. upset, if That's something right. don't convict you, That's are you know what I'm saying? That preacher is not preaching the word. Are you know what I'm saying? Amen. Right. Because the preacher is preaching the word. The reason why you need a pastor and anointed. Everybody talk about the apostle. Everybody talk about the evangelist. But the pastor's anointing is that of a shepherd. Amen. Yes. And his yeah. job is to help get you to heaven. Everybody needs a shepherd. And if you are going the wrong way, that shepherd anointing will get on him, amen, and he'll start stepping on your toes. And God will use that word as a crook to bring you back around. Are you hearing what I'm saying, amen? Thank you. That's why I believe the most important ministry in the body is that of a real pastor. And if you listen to me, Today, if you don't have a pastor in Montgomery, you need to come right here because this bishop will help you get to heaven. Come on, somebody, give God thanks. If you went white soap and springs, amen, you need to give a pastor Holland because she'll help get you to heaven. And if, and then you're in Ironton, amen, you need to give a bishop Coleman because he'll help get you to heaven. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. You got liberty, brother. Amen. Amen. But the problem with, with Samson, see, like I said, amen, it's one thing to stumble uh -huh. and fall. It's another thing to lay down. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And he just didn't lay down in the wrong place. He put his life Lap. He in his head. Life. Yeah. Of somebody Lord Jesus. who was trying to destroy him. Yeah. And if you look at the text, he knew yes. she was saying things. She was trying to get at yes. this church. Yes. And so in, 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 in the church today, it's fighting the spirit of Come on. Because it, if you, you can watch things on television. And usually back in the day, they, they would just be little in, in your windows. Yes. Right. Now they right. bring it all out yeah. in the open. Yeah. In the Olympics, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. opens yeah. up and defiling yeah. the Holy Communion. Yeah. I mean, you know, celebrating, 
you know, perversion like pastor and first gentleman. What kind of foolishness is that? Yeah, ridiculous. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> see, the devil wants to make you think, oh, well, if you don't like that, then you don't like to look at you something. Because you can love people, but you're always called to hate sin. That's right. And so, and so he comes and he lays his head down. Yeah. Yes, God. He lays his head down. That's what's wrong in now? The lap All his head. Of the lap. Which means this, okay? The lion represents the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Yeah. In other words, instead of keeping his mind stayed on Jesus, okay, he got his mind on the things of this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. They got his mind. Oh, and, and let me tell you something. You always know when Christians get their, their their minds on things of the world because now all of a sudden, oh well, you know, sin's not really sin. It's okay if you can do that. Yeah. Oh well, you know, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know, it's just eternal inclusion. Everybody's going to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Even the devil's going to the devil. The devil is a lie. That's a lie. There, there is a heaven to be gained and, and a hell, hell to, show. to be shown. Yeah. Still Are you hearing what I'm saying? Still and, is. And, and, and let me tell you something. I do believe that even in the mistakes he made, if he would have come to himself, uh -huh. are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible talks about the prodigal son who was in a pig pen. But, but, but because he got his mind and then in the father's house, he, 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 he was getting ready to, to, to just eat what the pigs had. But he began to remember how good it was with the father. And see, the Holy Ghost will do his job. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And now I'm going to say it again. The Holy Ghost will do his yeah. job. When you're being tempted to sin, when you're being tempted to fall, the Holy Ghost will come, like a gentleman, will come with a dove and remind you how good it was with God. The Holy Ghost, if you want to live right, you can live right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Father, Son, amen. Look like a pig, smell like a pig, say, I will arrive and go to my Father. And if he Yes, but sir. he laid his head in the lion's lap. Yes, sir. And the thing I've been seeing with the world huh. is that the world, amen, praise God, has seduced the church. Yeah. To where the church is yeah. just going to sleep yeah. in the lap yeah. of the world, in, in the lap of the life. Yeah. Just, just, amen, following the dictates of the world. Yeah. Amen. Following the pleasures of the world. Amen. Oh, why? Because it was so comfortable in the lap of the light. Look at how people are, amen. Oh, it's so comfortable, amen. Just staying at home. Oh, I know, you know, COVID came in, and maybe we couldn't come. But uh, guess what? COVID has gone and, you know what I'm saying, and left. And folks are still staying at home. And the fact is, is, is initially they were watching church online. They're okay, amen. If you can't come, I know some people are sick. But a lot of them folks, when we found out, amen, after a while, they stopped tuning into the church. Amen. Why is this? Because it's watching other things on YouTube and other things on TikTok. And the next one thing and another. And if you're not careful, Come you on. can get comfortable because the world yeah. likes to make it comfortable. Yes, the world likes to make it pleasurable. Are you hear what I'm saying? And you can just go to sleep. You know you're going to sleep, amen, when you no longer pray. You know you're going to sleep, amen, when you no longer desire the word. You know you're going to sleep, amen, when, when, when the hunger for God is no longer there. And what Solomon did there, excuse me, you can put Solomon in there too. But what Satan didn't realize is that while his head was in her lap, she started cutting things off. You need to understand, amen. She started cutting off joy. She started cutting off the word. She started cutting off peace. She started cutting off love. She started cutting off faith. Slowly but surely. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then he would have been all right if he had not laid his head down in the lot of slack. Thanks to Jesus. But all oh, because he did, things started getting cut off. Amen. And you need to understand, amen, when the enemy starts cutting off peace, he starts cutting off. He starts cutting off love. He starts cutting these things off. Amen. You need to 
to understand. You may think you're okay. You may think you're strong. But the Bible said when the enemy came against Samson, he thought he could get on his feet and get a praise on and the devil would leave. But guess what? He got up. And I don't know. Maybe he started clapping his head, stopping his feet, singing his song. But the devil didn't rebuke. Is because he lost his connection. Good God Almighty. I'm going to tell you, you can go to church and still lose your connection. Are you what I'm saying? Somebody here today, amen? You need to recognize you can still sing Christian songs and lose your connection. You can still call yourself a pastor. You can still call yourself a Baptist and lose your Sense in the Bible said that he got up and didn't know that the Lord had already lifted up his finger and walked out. God help us. God help us. He preaching. God help us. God help us if we lose our connection. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? Because there's no help against the enemy if we lose our connection. That's right. There's no hope in the streets if we lose our connection. And then you better stop all this idolatry. Oh, we just get the Republican here. It's going to be all right. Let me tell you something. It won't be all right if you don't have no connection. Oh, we just get the Democrats here. Oh, no, honey, you need to understand, amen? It's still not going to work if you lose your connection. There's somebody here today. And, and the thing is, is this. What makes matters worse is that then it grabs sense and tormented him. Yes. And the Bible said they got hot poker. Yes. And they popped out his eyes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they put him down in a pit. Yes. And the enemy laughed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got this saint out here smoking crack. Go ahead. Messed up. Yes, sir. Left his wife, left his kids. Because he lost his connection. Listen, I'm talking about members I have passed. Come on, sir. Come on. Tell me about it, brother. I passed a fella. He's in the church, family in the church. But you know, he's coming to church, slipping and slide. Yeah. Slipping and slide. church, looking good at yeah. To the side, he was so yeah. practicing in the 90s. To the hunting to West Virginia. Some of y'all might remember, I know you remember this. And he was walking across the tracks high. Oh, yeah. Train hit him. Cut two of his legs off, one of his arms. You know, I can name the names. Okay? Because he lost his connection. Yeah. You need to understand. The enemy comes not, but to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes, sir. And I know it looks bad. Yeah. But the problem is, is that the devil, when he puts Samson down in that pit, the devil never should have took his eyes. That's right. He never should have took his eyes. See, here's the thing. The devil always does too much. Yeah, yeah, he don't know when to stop. He always does too much. Yeah. Are you what I'm saying? See, some of y'all don't understand, amen? See, the Bible says all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. Now, I'm here to tell you something. God will use good things to get you in. But if he can't use good things, he'll use, use bad things. Yeah. See, see, I can testify, amen. And he took me said, there's times I went astray, and God allowed people to slap me back in his presence. Yes, sir. All right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've had things happen to me, amen. Praise God, it caused me to run back to God. I know you can't say nothing because you've always been perfect. You've always been right, amen. You ain't never done nothing wrong. But I'm here to tell you something, amen. The devil never should have took Samson's eyes. Matter of fact, what the devil should have did, amen, he just should have kept Samson with his head cut and kept, kept the line right in front of him, amen. But when Samson lost his eyes, and amen, he got his eyes off the line. He got his able to get his eyes back on God. And God told him to tell somebody this, amen. I don't care what kind of darkness you're going through. Amen. If you're God's child, God will use that darkness to help you get your eyes back on Him. Why is this? Because you need to understand, amen. God's the only God person 
that you can see when all the lights have been turned off. God's the only person that you can still see when everybody turns their back on you. God is still the only person that you can see when you can't see nobody else. And when he got his eyes back on you, all of a sudden, his connection got back. You know why? Because all of a sudden, I believe he realized, amen, God, I realized when everybody was bad, you're still good. I realized when the lot walked out, you're still merciful. I realized, what well, God, when everybody hated me, you still love me. There's somebody here today, and I know everything may not be working right, but listen to the old songwriter. will grow strangely dead yeah, yeah. in the light of his glory and grace. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you know what I found out? Yes. Is that sometimes, uh -huh. amen, it's not a bad thing when you lose things. That's right. Sometimes yes, it's not a bad thing when you can't pay the bills. Sometimes it's not a bad thing when the car gets repossessed. Oh, come on now. Yes, sir. Sometimes. Because the truth is, if some of them things were to happen, we would have still been trusted in those things. But oh, you would have had to lose some things. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it's not a bad thing when God don't automatically heal you when you want to be healed. Let me tell you something, amen. I've been struggling with some things, amen. And they didn't automatically come, but it caused me, amen. Praise God to draw closer to the Lord. It caused my prayer life in the strength. It caused me to grow deeper, amen. Look at the apostle Paul. You need to understand, amen. God didn't take everything from him. He said he had a thorn in his flesh. History said that Paul was blind. But you need to understand, even though he probably didn't see in the physical, he could see things in the spiritual. Praise God that took him to the next level. Thank you, Jesus. And so in the darkness, in the pain, I almost finished. Something began to happen. Yeah, yeah. He went in there bald. But something began to happen. Yeah, yeah. Can you The Bible says his hair began to grow back. Uh-huh. Thank you, Jesus. Began to grow back. In my mind, I think it was different. I think that before it was cut, it was nice and black and wavy. When it began to grow back, in my mind, I think it grew back gray. Uh huh. Wisdom. But it still grew. Yeah. It still grew. Thank you, Jesus. Love began to grow back. All right. Victory began to grow back. Joy began to grow back. Not joy in the things of the world, because he wasn't looking at the world. It was the joy of the Lord yes. began to come back. Yes, Slowly but surely, yes, it began to come back. Mm -hmm. And what they didn't realize is that his strength began to come back. Yes. You know what? Victory and strength is not always based upon how big your house is. That's right. And how nice your car is. Right. Samson got victory, got strength, and he was still in the pit. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. But even in the pit, God can allow yes, he can. your connection yes. to come back. Yes. I know. I'm not preaching to everybody. But you preach it. Thank you. But I want the person to know if they lost their connection, it can always grow back. Yes, sir. Absolutely. But it's got to grow. You got to get back in the world. Yeah. You got to get back to loving Jesus. Yes, You got to get back to staying connected with God through his church and through his people. Yes. The Bible says it's we walk in the light, he is in the light. Yeah. 
Oh, but preach, you don't know this person hurt me, that person hurt me. And so I think, yeah, I get it. And, people, and you hurt people too. That's right. All right. But guess what? Nobody's perfect. You cannot tell me that there are no saints and that there's no churches in this valley that you can't fellowship with. Come on. Come on. I'm not hearing that. I know there's some bad ones, but it's interesting how that people can go to a hospital, yeah. doctor give you wrong medication, yeah. yes. operate on the wrong kidney. Yes. I had a member of our church. She 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 had to have a tendon taken out of the knee. Doctor went and took the wrong tendon out. Okay. And guess what? You'll get sick and go right back to that hospital. Same doctor. Same doctor. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But guess what? You know, you can do that. And you can go back to the church. And understand that I'm here, but my trust is not in people. My trust is in God. You know the rest of the story, I don't have to tell you. The Bible says that they took Solomon in the temple, or excuse me, Samson in the temple. And he told the boy to rest him on his two largest pillars. Yes, sir. And he said, God strengthened me this once. Yes. yes. And because his connection came back, his strength came back. And he was able to fulfill the purpose of God. Because the destiny of God in his life was to deliver yeah. the children of Israel yes. from the Philistines. And God set it up that all of the major enemies were in that temple. Yeah. You know what that lets me know? In spite of your mistakes, you can still do God's will. Yeah. That's right. In spite of your problems. But we got to get back. Got to get back. To God growing in our life. We got to get back to the Word. We got to get back to loving the preaching of the word. We got to get back to the joy of the Lord is our strength. We can't play church. We got to be the church. I want everybody to stand. Thank you, Jesus, if you can. We're just going to worship. I want to turn it over to the bishop here a little bit. But I want us to worship.